G'day guys, welcome back to Drone Sense, episode number two. In the first episode, we talked about um, the, the, the three different tiers that you can fly under, recreational, sub two kilo, excluded, fully certified, all that sort of stuff. Today, I'd like to look at the machines in particular them, and, and get the start on the basics about the machines. Um, what is a drone? Why is it a drone? All that sort of stuff. How, how does it work? What, what are the components? What do you get? All that sort of stuff. In my hot little hands here is probably one of the most common drones on the market today. There's probably more of these sold than anything else at the minute. These are a, this is a DJI Phantom 4. There's a couple of different flavors of the Phantom 4. We've got the Phantom 4 Advanced, the Phantom 4 Pro. We'll break them down later, but this is the Phantom 4. Um, it's, it's DJI is one of the biggest drone companies on the planet, producing more drones than just about anyone else. Probably more drones than all of them combined, but anyway. Um, this is how it comes out of the box. This is the box it comes in, it's a foam box, and, and we'll have a look at a, a whole range of different drones shortly, but this is the Phantom 4. No assembly required, it comes pre-assembled. I might bring it in shot instead of holding it over my head. <laughs> it comes pre-assembled out of the box. No more assembly. Nothing like that is required. You don't need to build this drone or put anything together other than put the props on and charge the batteries. This is the controller that it comes with. Again, there's no binding required. If you're not sure what the term binding means, it means where you've got to make the controller talk to the aircraft. That's all pre-done. It comes with a, with, a, with a holder already to hold an iPad or an iPhone. It can hold an iPhone in here by simply popping out these little tabs and the iPhone sits sideways or Android or whatever it is you, you want to operate. Um, all pre-done, there's no programming required. Even the, the machine itself's flight computer is already done. So let's take a look at this machine. The Phantom 4, what, what, what is this thing made of? What's it consist of? Well, it's, it's a sort of a, a plastic housing, so it's all made of plastic, although there's a, I think a titanium version or something floating about it anyway. Four motors, brushless motors, we'll cover what they are a little later. Four brushless motors running four propellers. These are a, a nine inch plastic nylon type propeller. Goes on the, the motors and we'll get into how they actually work and how they fly a little later. Inside this little device is a, flight, a very sophisticated flight computer that keeps this thing flying. It takes instructions from the controller that you give it and it then does it based on its computer algorithms. Now, let me stress that you really don't fly these machines anymore. They fly themselves. Um, you basically give it an instruction on where you'd like it to go or what you'd like it to do, but if you let go of the stick and put it down under all things considered, it'll be where you leave it. So, and we'll, we'll get into that later on. Um, it, it is powered by a lithium polymer battery. Now, these lithium polymer batteries uh, in this particular drone um, by DJI are what DJI like to call a smart battery, lithium polymer smart battery. In that, inside this battery, it has circuitry. And it's designed to, I guess, think for the drone pilot. In the old days, you'd be running batteries, well, you're still not even in the old days, you still do in some drones now. This lithium polymer battery or this lithium polymer battery would power your drone. No smarts in this. It's purely a, uh, a number of cells wrapped up in plastic. Uh, you charge it with a very specific charger, you stick it in your drone, your flight, and the pilot has to monitor everything from the battery life to the, the voltage levels and then recharging it and all that sort of stuff. DJI, on the other hand, have taken all that away from the drone pilot and produced these smart lithium polymer batteries. I have a little problem with these in that it takes away what the pilot should know about lithium polymer batteries. And we'll do a whole episode, I think, on lithium polymer batteries a little later because they really, really are uh, dangerous given the wrong circumstances. And there's not enough being said about the dangers of lithium polymer batteries, including these from DJI that everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people seem to think are safe as houses. In fact, I know plenty of my clients, uh, one little school kid in particular at a lecture I recently did, who lost the house because of this battery, uh, a smart DJI battery. It happens, there's still lithium polymer. So anyway, that's that. Um, the, con the remote controller itself, the remote controller itself is, uh, again, all pre-programmed. There is nothing you need to do to this remote controller to make it talk to the machine. Uh, it is controlled by two sticks. We will get into all the controllers when we do our, our episode on controlling the drone later. It's controlled by two sticks, and that's those two sticks 
pretty much make the drone do whatever it is you want to do while it's flying. From taking off, from moving around, from going up and down, all that sort of stuff. There's even some buttons and dials on the back of the controller that help you control the camera. So that is the components in a nutshell. So let's look at a few different types of drones. Now I'll, I'll uh, again through the, the magic of post-production, let's cut away and have a look at a few different types of drones. Everything from a small drone to a really big one. The DJI Spark. A small drone sits in the palm of your hand. So it weighs less than two kilos. It can even fly from a mobile device. It doesn't have to have its own controller. But if you want to fly this commercially, you will need either registration for the sub two kilo or fly it under an OC and become fully certified. Another in the DJI family is the Mavic Pro. Again, less than two kilo, but the problem this aircraft has is it has a massive seven kilometer range. At seven kilometers, you will not see this aircraft. It will be way beyond visual line of sight. In fact, at only a few hundred meters, it's starting to get very difficult to see. Another player in the small drone market is the unique Typhoon H. Still weighs less than two kilograms, only just, but it's less. But this one's a hexacopter, meaning it has some redundancy should a motor or a prop fail. And we'll talk about that in a coming episode. Let's take a look at a fixed wing drone. This is the Parrot Disco. Great little drone, and it still weighs less than two kilograms. In fact, much less than two kilograms. But even though it's fixed wing, you still must be registered to fly this drone commercially under the sub two kilo excluded category. Let's take a look at a big dog. This is the DJI M600. This is a massive machine with a takeoff weight of just on 15 kilograms fully loaded. It spins very large, very dangerous 21 inch carbon composite props. If you want to fly this drone commercially, it requires a sub 25 kilogram endorsement on your license. And of course, the mini racing drones. All of these will be under two kilograms, but the same rules still apply. If you want to fly them commercially, you're gonna need registration. Otherwise, go out in the park and have a bit of fun. So as you can see, drones come in all different shapes and sizes. We've got everything from the tiny little thing here, and they're smaller than this. I mean, this is the Spark. But there's also smaller, the little tiny whoops and the little, uh, whatever they're called, little tiny ones that you can basically fly indoors and they're, they're really small, they sit in the palm of your hand. Right through to the big monsters like the M600 or the S1000s that spin props this big. And this is a carbon fibre propeller and I can tell you, if you tangle with this while it's spinning on a drone, the results are nothing less than devastating. So let's, let's, be realistic here, these things will hurt you. And later in another episode, I'm gonna to talk to you about the dangers associated with flying drones and getting hit by a drone, it's terrible. Here's another LiPo battery off a slightly larger drone. This is off the Inspire that you saw a moment ago, and this one's off the M600. So as you can see, the DJI range of product all run a very similar type of battery. Uh, they're a smart battery, all the circuitry's built into the battery, and they charge off very standard plug pack type arrangements. We'll get into all that in LiPo batteries at a later date. What is a drone? So let's just quickly uh, comment on what is a drone. Basically, it's anything remote control that flies. So if you've got a remote control plane that you bought from, from the local hobby shop, you know, technically it's a drone. If, if, that common word drone is, is something that's just been brought into the vernacular. It's not actually um, registered in regulation. The, the regulations don't speak of drone. What they speak of is remotely piloted aircraft and what you do with them. If you use it as a commercial tool, it becomes an RPA, a remotely piloted aircraft. If you use it as fun, just to go outside and have a great time, it's a model aircraft. In any case, they're an aircraft and they're flying, so it doesn't matter what it is or where you bought it. It doesn't matter if it's a tiny little one this big, uh, if it's over 100 grams, it falls under regulation. It doesn't matter if it's a fixed wing that flies, you know, instead of hovering. It doesn't matter what at all. They're all considered remotely piloted aircraft or model aircraft under regulation. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That's what is a drone. They're the, the most common drones that we've seen floating around or the ones you've seen just recently. Um, they, as I say, the, the, the dangers with these and the reason I'm doing these videos is you can take this drone out of the box 
and if it had a fully charged battery, they come probably half charged, but if it had a fully charged battery, you could literally be from the box to the air in minutes. And I guess that's what makes them a little bit dangerous is that it's very easy to be completely naive about how these things fly and what, you know, what the dangers are and what, what lurks within and all that sort of stuff. So this is why I'm putting these videos together. Hopefully by the end of this whole little program, you're a whole lot more ready to actually turn the drone on and go fly. So that's it for this episode. That's what is a drone and what the common components are of a drone and you know what you what you might expect. Anything from these big buggers to the to the smaller stuff here and batteries and sizes and whatnot else. Uh, again, if you've got any questions uh, about this episode or any past or future episodes, please send us an email. You can find us at training at fpvaustralia.com.au. You can pick up the phone and call us on zero two six double one two eight double five one or our website fpvaustralia.com.au. If you're finding this video on YouTube, if you go to our website, there's a whole page on this where all of our episodes will be listed. And as I say always, if you are flying a drone today, tomorrow, next week or next month, please do so safely and responsibly. We need safe skies for all. Enjoy.